Welcome to Spotlight on the Arts. I'll be your host today. My name is Michael McKeever. Joining me is our usual panel, the always wonderful, noted uh, producer, actress, director, Iris Acker. <laughs> Next to her is one of South Florida's premier journalists and theater critics, the founder of Florida Theater on Stage, Mr. Bill Hirschman. And next to me is the Carbonell Award-winning actress and my good friend, Karen Stevens. Now, today's episode is going to be about the art of the lighting designer, and we are very, very happy to welcome one of the region's best in the business, Mr. Jeff Quinn. Jeff, welcome. Thank you. <laughs> All right, let's get right into it. As a lighting designer, what do you do? I read a play, I watch it, I talk to the director about it, and I uh, come up with um, ideas or, or t of um, how the audience ought to see the show, what the conditions of the site should be. Is it light, is it dark, is it blue, is it green? Does it change a lot, does it stay the same? And beyond that, the, it can really can change quite a lot. I, I can remember early in my career, because I teach as well as, as light, I, I um, used to use a, use a textbook, you know, these four things are what a lighting designer does, and then it was five, and then it was six, <laughs> and that, and, then, <laughs> and uh, it, I think it changes all the time. Uh, different projects look for different things. Sometimes you try to hide your work and sometimes you don't. Well, that's interesting. Um, I've, I've had the great pleasure of seeing dozens of, <laughs> of sets that you've, you've lit. And yeah. the, the, from, from grand musicals to really small, intimate um, uh, shows in some of the smaller houses. And they all really serve the play. When you read a script, do you look at it and say, uh, let, me, let me phrase the question, do you use your lighting to help tell the story of the, of the play? I, I think, uh, as often as not, that, that's uh, one of the major goals, is, is that there's usually a story being told and you have to make it clear. Uh, and, and there's usually some points that take a special care, points that might be hard to grasp as, as the show gets put together. But sometimes that turns out not to be the case. Sometimes this, this is not an obvious story. Or, uh, or, or sometimes, I, I was just thinking earlier today about the mountaintop, mm -hmm. which certainly has a story, and yet the key to that is that, that, that play is that the author slow, slowly changes the genre of the play about the middle of it, and she does it in a very clever way, and the audience has to be brought along on that journey, mm -hmm. and, and that's the key to that play, well, is to take the journey at the right pace. Mm -hmm. Well, I think How do you actually mechanically do that? <laughs> uh, we, we change the language a little bit. Um, in, in that case, um, the play started out very realistically. We're, we're shown a, a grittier version of Martin Luther King than we're used to because we know he's a hero, but we kind of saw his, um, his frailties mm -hmm. in, in that play mm -hmm. too and uh, and and the character that you played mocks him a little bit mm -hmm. uh, or edges him along and then and then suddenly odd things start to happen things that that uh, suggest that uh, there's something something cosmic is going <laughs> on <laughs> something religious and is going some, on and there some challenges in that production lighting wise too um, that and you know when you come when you are doing a production and you come to a point where there are challenges when you were looking to create a special kind of outcome and there are challenges how do you and their director can you talk about how you and the director collaborate to to make whatever that needs to happen happen um, well, yeah, I, I, I'm, I, I've worked with uh, the, Joe in mm -hmm. that case uh, qu quite a few times, and uh, and and the one I think I think the one thing that we realized sort of last was that um, there was a, there was a speech where you're you're just kind of all of a sudden getting girlish and catty, and and it's not too long before. Um, we're going to suggest that you're an angel, that. Mm -hmm. um, we we needed to get the audience away from the reality and the grit that we did before, and and we did um, um, it involved giggling on the bed. We we ended up doing a moving effect 
that kind of had this pink flowery feel to it and it it um, it, it came out of left field in some ways. It wasn't something we intended to Cosmic. do at the beginning. <laughs> but, I uh, use that word, I'm gonna hang on to it. You know, it so much depends on the equipment though that you have to work with. You go from theater to theater mm -hmm. and um, well, yeah, it, 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 <laughs> it, can, it certainly makes a difference in terms of the scale that you work uh -huh. at. Um, to work with what you but, have. <laughs> um, but, it, you know, in a small house like the Gable Stage with a small audience, you can do things with less. Um, mm -hmm. and, and in that case, I, I think we might have, you know, spent an extra $50 or something. It wasn't <laughs> a lot of money <laughs> to, to achieve something um, using pieces of effects we already had to augment um, what, yeah. what was needed. And, and so you just, you know. When you, when you get started, you get the script, you're reading it. Now, do you sit down early on with the director and talk about a vision so that you don't show up? You know the week of tech, and go direct, and the director goes, "What the heck is that?" Well, or do no. you, or or do you do a lot of work, or most <coughs> of your work, in those four or five days before opening night, or both? Um, How does this work? It, it's in between that. Uh, hardly anybody is really articulate enough about their work to talk about what they want. I mean, especially before you do the work. How do you know how you're going to direct the play until you directed it? Mm -hmm. and, and 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 in truth. I, I would say that, that the best directors don't necessarily know how to talk about directing, they know how to do it. Um, so, so I try to make decisions as late as possible and to see as many rehearsals as possible so that I can see for myself what the feeling is and know what, what my goal should be. Um, sometimes some of the work has to be done ahead of time and, and that's not so much at Gable stage as it is at some of the larger venues where there's more to do and you, you, you kind of like have to turn it over early to the, the crew so that they can start rigging things. And that's when you start to need a lot of money. I'd like to talk about you, the Because you have spotlight. to hang too much and then just use what you're going to use. Mm -hmm. That spotlight, which sometimes is there and isn't um, when it should be, can't that be computerized? Uh, I mean, the actor gets a mark. And, this, and you press a button, or is there still always that spot operator? Well, um, there are automated. Uh, you mean are you talking about like fo fo uh, follow spots? Or? Follow, yes. The, um, they're too often they don't follow. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. A good operator is rare. Well, it used to be that that it wasn't unusual for for stars to travel with their favorite follow spot operator <laughs> and so that you could you could have somebody that you trusted that would be loyal to you and keep you looking good and and uh, you, you know like an old shoe somebody that that uh, that would do that for you um, there there are on the market some uh, radio controlled uh, spots you wear a transponder and the spot follows you around oh, and, oh, and it, like it, it's an expensive rig it's oh, more sure. more likely to happen in rock and roll than anywhere else well along the same lines of that how has technology changed yeah. over the years? You've been doing this for a while. Have you seen a great um, change in the in the evolution of uh, no, tremendously? Lighting? And 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 lighting is much better than it was. Um, in some ways, in some ways, it's just kind of done what the culture does. It has everything is bigger. It has more money in it. Everything is brighter. Um, and uh, although most people still make an effort to use the range, you know, a show might be bright overall, but it's crazy not to get a dark scene in there to get, <laughs> get, get some contrast, to get something, you know, to use the, to use the range of what's, yeah. uh, what's available. Um, but um, but, but the, the latest generation of equipment, and Gable Stage has just gotten a new board that I haven't had a chance to use yet. I, I will likely on the, the next show I do there. Um, can do, can program more quickly so that you can get, uh, you, can, you can afford to have an idea late and not say, oh, there's not time to do that. I can still get, get some finesse into it. Um, it in some ways, we're, we're trying to recapture the spontaneity that the field had when it was older. I, I can remember when I, I worked at FIU for a while, and I used to do a couple shows with uh, in the studio with a setup that had like four dimmers, six dimmers, almost nothing. Um, and, and I would just go in and live work the lights for the show. And it was kind of fun because you could, 
you could imp you could like work live on improving somebody's uh, appearance in the course of a speech, but to leave instructions for somebody else how to do that, forget it. <laughs> there was no way to do it. Whoa. And so you can get some of that with some of these new boards, though. You program cues that have many parts and that, uh, you know, somebody pushes one button and ten things happen sequentially. So over everything's yeah. computerized specific. now. Nothing is done manually other than that one person. Um, Not too much. A, a Not too button. much. Wow. At, um, at, at you, uh, there's still a difference between a good operator and a bad operator. But, um, Say master electrician. They call him a master for a reason. Uh, right. If, in mm -hmm. fact, he is. But oh, it should um, be. but the person that actually is is most more the key is the uh, stage manager who determines exactly oh. when something mm. should be initiated. For the people who you might initiate that's a important sequence. To know. Yeah, for the people and who are watching who may not know what a stage manager is, uh, explain to to them what, what what they do, how they call the show. Sure. Uh, well, the stage manager, of course, has different functions at different parts of the show. But when when it comes to actually calling it. The stage manager will have um, a, uh, a book that's heavily annotated in the margins about when uh, a light cue has to be initiated, when a sound cue has to be initiated, um, frequently when an actor should enter or leave, um, carpentry cues. They can get pretty complicated. Sure. And for musicals, it's often a job that has to be done by more than one person. Uh, but, um, but, uh, but, but certainly in, in, uh, in straight drama, it's, it's usually a one-person job. And, uh, and, and at Gable stage, um, Kristen Pieski is, is uh, really first rate. And yeah, she'll she's often amazing. not only call the cues, she'll, she'll operate them. So, one hand, she's initiating sound <laughs> cues, and the other hand, she's initiating lighting cues. And uh, wow. somehow wow. she manages to turn the pages, too. Wow. <laughs> well, what you do um, is, very much, is very artistic. I mean, in the sense of coming up with a vision and creating it. One of my favorite pieces of work of yours was 50 words at Gable stage, which was just, you know, an apartment or a home. And the, the lighting seemed very naturalistic. But as the show went on, you did all kinds of interesting things to create different senses of mood, different times of day, without ever calling attention to yourself unless you were looking. Can you talk a little bit about that design and that artistic? I, I, of what I would did? love to. That, that was one of my favorites. Um, oh, good. One uh, of... Um, one of the things that, that uh, Joe Adler and I have talked about many times is that he, he gets allergic to light cues. He doesn't, he doesn't <laughs> like light cues happening that he doesn't know are going to happen <laughs> or when they're going to happen. And he doesn't like a lot of light cues. So uh, literally when we first worked together, I think the very first show I might have had 100 cues in. But since then, there have been cues that, there have been shows that have had like 10. <laughs> because, so just, uh, and, and it's kind of, I think, in his head, the kind of exercise that directors employ when they do a long extended shot, you know, something that's going to shoot for five minutes or ten minutes. So we're going to do that with the lights, too. But it also solves some technical problems because he goes to the show every night. He likes to change the blocking sometimes. And if there's a lot of light cues, the, the, oh the lighting would have to change, too. Wow. And, and that's complicated. <laughs> you, know, you have to get somebody to come in. So, so less cues has kind of been his bias, and uh, and in that show we had we, we had a lot of changes of times of day. But but the way we worked out kind of between us was that the cues were all about somebody hitting a light switch, mm -hmm. and uh, and so we would that's how we would communicate with each other. Well, why don't you have them hit that switch at this point? And why, or, 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 or he would just have somebody go over and do a light switch, and then I, oh, cute, cute, I can write a cute. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have. <laughs> uh, but what was what what I especially liked uh, about that show was uh, I uh, the the rhythm that the actors got moving on the set. The set had some nice spaces going up and down stairs, and and a little side room in the kitchen, and. kind of went with the idea that sometimes people avoid being lit. Sometimes people exactly. seek out the dark. And, and so some scenes, the actors go moving into another place, and instead of going, look over here now, kids, <laughs> we, uh, we just let it happen. How do you light the dark? 
That's <laughs> I, uh, many times they're in the dark, but we can. The audience can see them. Well, a lot of it's about lighting people it. by the edges, and and uh, if you think of film, uh, the, especially where, film because everything is so big, you can get away with ridiculously low levels of lighting, all that we, that we couldn't do in the uh -huh. theater uh -huh. all, all the time. But if you light people by the edges so that you're creating shadows, you just get a little light behind somebody or a, a, a little, you see half the face. That, that can be really exciting if, uh, if, if it's not sustained for too long. It can, it can get tedious if you start to think, I wish I could see what she's thinking. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, in, in various forms of art, um, to to, if you know your craft through and through, you know what elements to put together to create a certain effect. Like a painter knows mm. that this stroke will create this effect, or if you mix these colors, it'll create this effect. Or a hairstylist mixing colors will know that if you put this and this together, you'll get this. The same for a lighting designer, yes? That oh, you, yeah, that you yeah know, definitely. You, yeah, that you, you have to know what will create a certain effect. Can you talk a little more about that element of it? Um, how do you come? Is it just with experience or do you have to be taught those things? Um, it, formal training is part of it for almost everybody anymore. It, it's complicated enough that, that you have to do that. And, uh, and, and, and we usually begin by looking at a set and thinking about where equipment can go. That, that you can physically, uh, how, what you can physically achieve, and and uh, what range of things might be desired within a show. If part of the show happens at night and part of it happens in the day, and you want to have any kind of naturalism, then you have a different color in those different places. And in the daytime, maybe the light comes from the general direction of the window, um, although not necessarily through it. And at nighttime, you want to think about well, where are the fixtures, mm -hmm. and, and get some kind of illusion going going that way. So, so that lets, lets, lets down a lot of things. And you can come up with, uh, almost just from the script and, and the set, you can often come up with an idea of what equipment you need, and then you just have to decide how you're going to use it mm -hmm. to, to figure out, you know, are the shadows long, are they deep? Those are things that have to do with the mood of the play and how, how, how mm -hmm. it's happening with the direction. I was well, always fascinated, I'm sorry, by, you know, the gels. You know, on the lighting, that. That on funny? the lighting fixtures themselves, and I, how you knew exactly which gels to use to That's create right. what effect. That's very good. fascinating. That's good. Uh, um, <laughs> it, it um, we we have little books of gels, you uh -huh. know, and yeah. and, uh, and there there are literally hundreds of colors on the market. I, I I decided fairly early in my career that I would stick mostly with one line because it saves everybody money. You know, you can have an inventory of these 200 colors, and, uh, and even though there might be a thousand others, there's a lot you can do with 200 <laughs> different colors. Uh -huh. and, uh, and just go outside that palette when you really have to, uh -huh. um, to, uh, to get something else. Um, I, 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 uh, I have kind of a, a set of colors that I use by habit, maybe ten that I use more I, than I was just going to ask, is there else. a set palette that you're very comfortable with that you, that you like using? Well, I do, uh, you, but yes and no, because I, I, at least two, three times a year I'll think, I have, to, I have to get a new palette, I have to like <laughs> not be the same. And so I'll, I'll purposely force myself to choose another color. And sometimes in the middle of the process, I'll go back to my old friends. <laughs> <laughs> I like, I like but, you to talk about palette, it's like, uh, oh, it's very much about a palette. It's painting with light. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. somebody, exactly. Somebody once pointed out uh, that if you go into a dark theater and there's no light, you can't see anything. So that every single thing that you see on a stage is due to you. Do, truly, do you have to truly. approach it that way? Yeah, 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 very much. Um, and and it it always I I mean it's especially when uh, it, it, it's tempting when you're working fast to like build a cue from the last cue, but it, it is so much more creative to, to find the time to just turn it all off <laughs> and, and, and put on what you want most and yeah. then add in what you need to balance that and, uh, and what's that person sitting in that corner seat need so they can see too and, and then right. just let it, let it build so that you don't have anything that you don't need. Um, the, um, the, 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 the cliche of the producer is somebody who sits in the back of the room and says, 
turn it all on full. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that's so true. <laughs> my book, yes. I love that. I've worked with those folks. And that's like the least interesting thing to do. Uh, you know, you can run up the light bill, you can warm <laughs> everybody up, I'll sweat a little more, but it does not look interesting. What about films? Did you ever do anything with films, television? I, I did a little bit of television when I was in school, but oh. uh, but but I haven't done much. It's another uh, much whole since. field, huh? It it, it is, and uh, and and in some ways I regret it. It just has been happenstance, though. I you know I found interesting work in theater. It's different people doing it. Um, I haven't gone looking for work for a long time. People just call me, and that's comfortable. Wow. That, comes, yeah. that comes with being really good. Yeah, very fortunate. Well, yeah, and and I guess I and and I guess content. I, I'm not. I, it's it's partly a personality thing because I'm not. Uh, I'm not. I, I'm not driving for something else. I'm not trying to get out of town. I'm do you, not, do you I, do much here. work in the way of um, with projections? Either do the projections yourself, or as a lighting designer, you have to. Incorporate some projections. Yeah. It, there's always a couple projects a year. I, um, I I was really fascinated as a student with what was being done with um, Gobo's projected light and that sort of thing. And I I incorporate that almost all the time, um, sometimes really heavily. Um, and uh, and especially if I'm doing like variety shows where you're you know you want to be able to get a big change in the light quickly, I'll, I'll oh, go that quickly. way often. Oh. Um, but but um, extensive projections are expensive to do, and uh, and they're they're hard for one person to do. It's it's it it, it is a specialty now, and uh, and so there's only maybe one or two shows a year that I'll get involved in uh, that, that somebody has the budget to do. You know, it's interesting. Like the, let's say the Carbonell Awards. I mean, none of us are lighting designers, and yet we're deciding who gets. The awards for the best lights. Sure, you sure. Know, so what you're getting is really an audience approval, because that's what we really are. Yeah, yeah. But but that's nice. And that's okay. The recognition is is correct. Would you say? But uh, I, I don't know how else to work. Well, he's won well, several. Think about it. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a really good question. I've asked you that before. When you're a lighting designer and you go to see a show, what do you see? You see how do lights. you evaluate? What you're looking at? Uh, well, I don't. I don't usually set out to evaluate it because I'm really interested in seeing the show. I like to be entertained. I, I like things in general, but it's of course impossible not to. And there's always some point that I think, well, I would have done that a little differently. I would have done that a little differently. <laughs> but not necessarily that that means that that person didn't do well. I, I'm most excited when I see somebody that does something that I like. That is not what I would do. Mm. <laughs> um, you know, it, it, it uh, expands my world and uh, and shows their personality. I um, I thought um, Steve Welch did some interesting things with um, the um, Sonia and Masha show at Gable yeah. Stage right. last year. Totally different from what I anything I've done in that space, but it was interesting. It was fun and uh, what, what used you, a little more equipment. But, uh, what do you prefer when you see a show where the lighting is invisible and you don't really notice the lighting, or when you say, "My God, look at that lighting," or does it depend on the show? Yeah, that, that depends very much on the show. Um, uh, th there are some shows that really need, you know, a lot going on, and and you you want to contribute it. And I, 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 I think it's a miss to try to always be invisible it's not you know there's you, sometimes you just have to step it up sure you know, to, and, and sure show, the show just by nature what it is calls for that kind of right, razzle -dazzle. right. but um, but but you also need to be able to slide it in you know yeah. um, when when uh, when lighting first got introduced in the theater in the in the teens, um, it, it was the same time that, that melodrama was kind of like starting to feel worn out, sort of hackneyed, and uh, people like uh, Lewis Hartman and uh, David Belasco used light exactly the way the underscored music was working down the street for mm -hmm. somebody else, right. and uh, and that was what was brilliant about it because they could affect the audience when the audience didn't know they were being affected. Wow. And, and and surely we we all do that. Uh, it's still being in, done in today. In acting, sure. as much as in lighting, mm -hmm. we we look for uh, a bag of tricks that's not always overt, 
but sometimes you let people know that you're acting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. exactly. When theater started, they used to do it by, well, what did George Abbott say? The greatest um, achievement in the, in the 20th century was electricity. <laughs> what, what, gaslight? Is that what they used for lights? How did they For light? a while, and before that, it was oil and coal oil, <laughs> and I mean, the, the, the theater for centuries was at the forefront of the lighting industry, because, huh. my God, there was never enough. <laughs> right. Right. Just, sure. You, sure. you just had to do more, and, and of course, the fire danger was horrible. Mm. I mean, <laughs> in, uh, in England, the footlights are called the floats, because they used to have a, 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 a trough filled with oil, and wicks floating in it. Jeez. Literally. What could, what could possibly go wrong with that? Good Lord. <laughs> so you wonder why there are all these draconian fire laws in yeah, the theater. Well, now we know. <laughs> when you have moats of oil on stages, that can't be too good. Yikes. Yeah. Can, can you talk briefly, one, another Gable stage show you were involved with was Blasted, mm -hmm. in which the entire thing fell, the, the, the set completely changed in the dark, and you had to come up with a completely different light plot, right? It uh, it it was in, uh, in in it was there were lights that were only used in one section of the show and not in another, and uh, and and just a few that that made the whole deal. It um, that, that was an interesting interesting project uh, for uh, for all of us. I, um, I I I think out of all of the shows I've done at Gable Stage, it involved the most man hours, just because. We we got into lighting rehearsals not knowing how some scenes would be done, mm -hmm. and, and, and then we tried something and it didn't work. And we tried something <laughs> else. Well, I have to tell and, you, the uh, end result was amazing. Yes. It was uh, one of the best very proud um, of lighting um, uh, designs that I have ever seen, um, and it's because of your expertise and because you are so good. Thank you so much for being here, Jeff. Um, it's. Time to wrap this one up. Uh, it was uh, just a pleasure having you here with us today. Oh, great to be here. I thank want to you. thank my panel and all of you for joining us today. We hope you learned something and had some fun as well. Uh, if you want to know what's going on on South Florida Stages, just go to floridatheateronstage.com. All, all the information you need to know is right there. Thanks so much for joining us, and we will see you next week. Bye.